video is the third in a series about solo transcription. I'm going to talk about the output stage, which is what you do with the solos after you've transcribed them. A common question is whether you should write the transcriptions down or whether you should just learn to play them on your instrument. For the transcription assignment in my university improv class, I don't ask for a written submission. I just want to hear them play the solo, once with a recording and once with a metronome. That tells me everything I need to know about how much they've absorbed. When they're playing with a recording, I'm listening to see how precise the replication is. When they're playing the solo with a metronome, I ask myself if a listener could be convinced that they're actually improvising, the way a good actor sounds like she's speaking off the cuff rather than delivering memorized lines. You know, even if they're going to cheat and start with a transcription that someone else has done, it's still going to take a lot of work to play it convincingly. And I actually think it's harder to play it accurately if you don't transcribe it yourself. For one thing, there's a good chance that you're going to pick a solo that's too hard, since somebody else has done the heavy lifting, literally. For another, learning music by ear gives you something you can't get from a written page. And in fact, I believe that the visual image can block oral pathways. When I assess the improv assignment, I take into account the difficulty of the solo and the accuracy of the reproduction. But to do a sloppy job on a hard solo is strategically the wrong approach, from the standpoint of the grade, certainly, but more importantly, from the standpoint of personal development. Now, all that said, there are benefits to writing down the solo. One has to do with reading. The better able you are to notate what you hear, the better you'll be able to hear what you see. Another is posterity. You put a lot of time into this, and it's nice to have a written record. I show the class this stack of handwritten transcriptions that represent hundreds if not thousands of hours of work, all of it done on my own time, not to fulfill any assignment. I did it because this is something I wanted to learn how to do, and this was how it seemed I was going to learn how to do it. Now, my process, which I'm not convinced is the right process or the best process, was to write the notes down as I figured them out, sometimes just putting down the note heads and fit getting the rhythms afterwards. That allowed me to move at a faster pace and get more transcribed in a given amount of time. Now, it's a fair point that you might not retain the information as well doing it that way as if you were memorizing as you go, but I'd constantly go back and play along with what I'd transcribed leading up to the spot that I was working on. That had helped me pinpoint mistakes in my transcription and it embedded the solo in my mind to the point that I pretty much had it memorized by the time I was done. Now, another advantage to writing your transcriptions down is that you are, in essence, compiling your own personal jazz etude book, which can be used as study material. I used to devote one day a week to just playing my solos instead of my normal practice routine. I'd play each one with the recording, and then I'd work on specific parts of the solo that I found hard to play, just like you do with an etude. Sometimes while I played along with the solo, I'd leave the transcription and start to improvise on my own, trying to maintain the sound and the feel and the overall approach of the soloist. Now I call that running off the cliff. The reference is to cartoons where a character runs off a cliff and continues to run through the air until he looks down and then starts to plummet. In the opening, you heard me play a couple of choruses of Freddie Hubbard's solo on Bird-like and one of my own, improvised in the same style. I'm going to let you hear a few more of those now. In essence, I'm trading choruses with Freddie, although in real life I don't think I would have fared too well in that situation. Now here's another way to extract additional benefit from your solos. In Jazz Tactics, I talk about the four T's, the four things you need to do if you want to learn to improvise. Transcription is one of the four T's. Transposition is another, and your transcriptions offer an excellent way to work on transposition. Each day, pick a short phrase from one of your solos and on your instrument, transpose it to all 12 keys. The phrase should be short enough and simple enough that you can do it in five minutes. Otherwise, you may find it to be such a tough slog that you avoid this assignment. 
Like transcription, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And you'll probably see yourself get faster even as you work a single phrase through the keys. I suggest you keep a notebook or a notation file and write down the phrase, what solo it's from, and the date. Now, I only mean write it down in the original key. The other keys you work out on your instrument, not on paper. Years from now, when that language has been absorbed into your vocabulary, it'll be fun to look back and see when you were working on specific phrases. This is a great assignment because it can be adapted to any level. People differ in terms of how much they can do in five minutes, but the benefits of taking 365 phrases through 12 keys over the course of a year are huge, even if each phrase is only a few notes. Now, the phrases could also be melodies or scale patterns, but when they originate as part of a solo that you transcribe, it'll have more relevance to you when you're trying to improvise your own melodic lines. When you learn a phrase in more than one key, you broaden its impact and you expand your vocabulary, and you also encounter technical challenges on your instrument that are related to specific keys. Now, of course, the goal is never to play a learned phrase verbatim in the course of an improvised solo. It might be tempting to do that because it's probably hipper than something you can come up with on your own, but it'll sound forced because you're not actually improvising. You will find, though, that over time, certain phrases work their way into your vocabulary to the point that they come out unconsciously. Now, that's okay, and it leads us to the question of whether transcribing will turn you into a copycat or suppress your creative instincts. So, you know, even with the most innovative jazz musicians, people like Louis Armstrong, Lester Young, Thelonious Monk, Charlie Parker, Ornette Coleman, it's easy to identify their influences, and in most cases, they acknowledge them. Clark Terry, who had one of the more unique and recognizable styles amongst jazz trumpet players, famously and concisely summed it up by saying, imitate, assimilate, innovate. Every musician learns from other musicians. Transcribing is just one very effective way to do that. We can't all be innovators, but everybody can develop a unique style based on who they've listened to and who they are as human beings. It's not something you can or should try to force. If you learn as much as you can from as many musicians as you can, that process takes care of itself.